Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the episode of Great Locks. I'm Gunther the Great, and today we are on another episode of Beyond the Roots, and we have a really, really, really special guest that y'all requested. So I had to make my way all the way down to Hollywood to meet my boy, Foodie. Introduce yourself, bro. Hey, man. It's Young Foodie P, man. Uh, pleasure to be here. Um, yeah, I'm ready for this interview. Let's talk about dreads. Let's do it. Look, there's no other really YouTuber with dreads. You know what I'm saying? I mean, there, there's a lot, but like, you know what I'm saying? It's not often you come across one so or one who even knows about it. So I'm just, just happy to talk some air. Sweet. Let's do it. Yeah, so like, I guess the first thing I want to ask is like, when did you start? Star YouTube. Or you, you could tie it in both. Like say, like when hair. did you start your dreads and when did you start like YouTube? Kind of compare to both. Bro, I've I've always had like I've always been growing my hair since like elementary school. Since since I was probably like since I was probably like seven, eight years old till right now, there was probably like there there was no more than like one year I went without having long hair. Right. I would always grow my hair. So um I started, I had hair probably in elementary school. I, I chopped my hair off in uh, sixth grade because I wanted dreads in sixth grade, but my parents never, they just never did it. Yeah. Seventh grade started growing back my hair, second, uh, second half of the school year. And then finally, 10th uh, grade convinced them to, to give me dreads and here we are today. So, what method did you choose to get your dreads and like, uh, yeah, like how did you start? See, when I started, I didn't know nothing about like, like different methods or different ways about dreads. Nobody, nobody like, I feel like probably nowadays there's like more info on it and people yeah. are more like knowledgeable about it. But when I started, it was just like, I know I want dreads. My mom knows this lady, let's go. That's pretty much how it was. I think I paid like $85 or $95 to go. And I, like now I think I know what method she did. I don't know the right term, but okay. she got a comb. Oh, she parted it. She parted it and twisted it. Yeah, so that's just comb coil. So that's the only method you did or like the... I would say, yeah, the method you chose to get yeah, there. Yeah, I never did, uh, dang, what's that called? The locking one? Where you oh, like the curtail interlock or one? interlocking? Yeah. I never did that. I just just straight up get that grease, yeah. twist it pretty much. Cool. So, like, you still do retwist and everything like yeah. that? Yeah. What's funny is, like, in like high school, I didn't really have like a lot of money. So, I probably, between when I started my dreads in 10th grade to 12th grade, I maybe got my dreads retwist four times. Maybe. Yeah. So were they like out of hand? Were they like it was out of hand. I used to like pe people would laugh because like it was so it was bad. I had an afro up top with dreads at the bottom, and it was a lot shorter than than it was now. And then you know when you first start dreads, they look they look like like snail fingers or or like however snail fingers, snail to have fingers. You know what I'm talking about? They look like that. Um, they just look horrible. And like thick dreads wasn't cool, so people would laugh that it was thick dreads with a like huge afro up top. So. But then when I started, you know, getting money and having a, like a job, then I got a retwist. And now I go like once a month. Got it done yesterday, actually. Like, it's so weird seeing how like kind of the whole thing progressed as far as how dreadlocks were looked at back then versus how they are now. Like after seeing, you know, like The Weeknd or Basquiat and all these other right. people to where it's like all these other things are getting accepted into like uh, how people see dreadlocks or something right. like that. Because there's such a stigma that comes with it. It is like most most like whether you're a, like most black, either you're a rapper or an athlete, they have some type of like dreadlocks, whether it's free form or like grow their hair naturally. The only, the only time you don't really see it is like if you're like an actor, you know, that might stop you from getting a role. But I remember me, like me trying to get a job when I was like in high school or like after I graduated high school, I was this close to cutting my hair after I graduated because I know my hair was an issue and my parents would tell me like, yo, you're not about to get a job with that hair. And I was, I was really close to cutting my hair. So I, I know there's like a big stigma around it and I know like, it's probably changed a lot more nowadays, but like a lot of jobs, they, they have a certain look they want for their employees, or they might think of how their customers would react to employees with a certain hair, just like a certain aesthetic in general. Yeah. Kind of similar to like having tattoos or something. We're now getting more like comfortable with seeing people with different like, like unique styles and showing their own like personality at their workforce. So. I mean, just from, I mean, when, cause we we're in high school at the same time, but like mm -hmm. seeing where we were in high school and seeing how the world was, and how people accepted people seeing it now it's like it's a completely different how right. like everyone is like accepted or everyone is like you know equal which that's how it should be but it's like things are tremendously different compared to how things used to be so right. like you you talked a little bit about like trying to get a job and stuff like that you had a job in high school and before youtube what was that like nah so i got my first job after i graduated high school my parents said let me get a job in high school even though it was broken it make no sense like it's i don't get it but uh i had a um 
First job, I was a dishwasher. Like, I was the actual dishwasher. So imagine a dishwasher, but imagine my face right there. That was me. Um, I was washing dishes. I got sick of it. I was there for like two, three months, and then I started working in the office for about two and a half years. Wow. And then uh, my boss came up to me one, one Monday and was like, on Friday, you're getting released. And that Friday was the same day I had my first viral video. Sheesh. Which video was that? It was, it was the um, um, Burger King Mac and Cheetos Taste Test. And I feel like that, I've seen that video, actually. That shot out for me. This was ending of June 2016. And that was like kind of what brought you into like, you know, I'm going to take this serious. Yeah. So like I've been wanting to do YouTube for like so for like so long. I've had skateboard channels back in the day in middle school. And then I've, and then I kind of stopped that. And then 2015 one day, I remember at work, I was like I, I left home work one day early to go make my channel. A year from that is when um, is when YouTube kind of blew up for me. So it's crazy. Cause like I actually started out with skateboarding videos too. Really, so it's really you cool to skate? see. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, still, well, I still skate every now and again, but yeah, we used to be really into it. Like I was sponsored, and then I ended up break my ankle. Swear. And, yeah, just went through everything. But that was like what really introduced me to saying, you know what? Like I really like making videos. Right. And like I figured out any way possible to try to make it to where I can, you know, live financially off of this. Right. And um, it's really cool to see, you know, from your personal perspective, saying. I want this so bad and you finally get it. So it's really cool to see. I mean, even, I mean, I'm gonna tell the people like you just hit a million subs. Yeah. So that's a big accomplishment. That's a huge accomplishment. You bitches skateboarding? <laughs> you look like Nigel Houston kind of. You ever got that? Not really. <laughs> nah, cause I could see it. Cause like, like, I don't know. Y'all have the same skin complexion. <laughs> and like, I'm just thinking back probably when you were younger and like his long old dress that he used to have that he was like famous for. Oh, yeah. And then like, I don't know. And you, bitch, you, if you had his hair, at his, at his age that he had it, the same as I hear, I swear y'all could look just alike. Like, what would you say is the biggest challenges as far as, you know, you can even tie it in with dreadlocks, like biggest challenge you had with dreadlocks, because a lot of people don't see it with you just being, you know, like the YouTuber that you are, the YouTube creator that you are. Right. They don't see like the, you know, the personal aspect of things. You've done videos on your dreadlocks, which I've seen, um, yeah. but they don't really get the in-depth um, you know, experience. So like, what was the biggest challenges you experienced with it? Or were there points where you're like, you know what, I don't really want to do this anymore or anything like that? Video wise or in life? I would say both. Okay. I don't think I necessarily had one video wise. Um, like fun fact on my channel, like, like, let's say I'm doing a thumbnail. I would purposely make my hair like this on purpose yeah. to like, to get the extra click or like to just to like, embrace being a black creator. I would purposely do that. You can look on some of my thumbnails and see me put, purposely put my hair in weird and wear styles that my hair's not like that the whole video. I, so I never really felt like I had like a, a, a challenge I had to go through as far as video wise with my hair. Cause like, this is what I feel make me stand out. Like if I, if I didn't have, I'm known as, oh, Pooty, the guy with the dress. Yeah. I may be wrong. I think I'm like the first dreadhead to hit a million subscribers, at least black dreadhead to hit yeah. a million subscribers. But um, in, in life pretty much, job, you know, especially when I, and then when I didn't have money in school, having to, having to deal with my, my afro on my head because it looks so trash. Um, that, that was pretty much my challenges there. Other like annoying challenges, not challenges, but like, I love my hair, but yo, if, if I could like cut my hair every night before I go to bed, I'd be the happiest person. Like going, going to sleep with dreads is like the worst feeling ever. It feels like you're trying to lay on like, like extra like rocks like it's bristle like, pads or something yeah it's like you got it it's i hate it i hate going to sleep with my hair but other than that those are like the main challenges for it and i feel like i'm blessed to to not have to rely on looking for a job or something because i could just have my hair how i want yeah. and if i didn't then i, I my hair if, if i wasn't doing youtube or any doing anything in like the like entertainment field i probably most definitely not be having a judge right now Okay guys, this is the first part of the Pudi interview, so be sure to stay tuned for the second part, and it is going to be dropping this Sunday, so stay tuned for that guys, it's going to be a really dope video, we're talking about some really good stuff in that episode, we're really getting in depth with everything, hopefully you guys really did enjoy this episode, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, and don't forget to go check out Pudi's channel, and please, if you want to get dreadlocks, or if you have them already, and you just want to maintain your hair, go to greatlocks.com, to where you can find all your dreadlock or hair needs, or just tutorials and everything like that that'll really help you out but other than that guys if you guys are new if you're from Pootie's channel make sure to comment down below say you're from Pootie's channel and make sure to subscribe if you are from his channel other than that we'll see you guys in the second part peace